My name is Thomas Spanchia Jr. I'm from Kikutsmovi. And as my mother is of the Bear Clan, then everyone born in Hopi follows the, the matrilineal Hopi bloodline, so I am a Bear Clan too. In the clan fratteries, of which there are about 30 clans in the Hopi, they're grouped together, and each of those groups uh, in the history of in the migrations traveled together. And as they traveled together, they uh, went all different directions, settled different areas, and in their return are given certain duties, responsibilities in the hierarchy of the Hopi. And the clans are set in a hierarchy that starts with the bear clan at the very top and the coyote clan at the very bottom. And each, each uh, group of the, these clans has separate and different responsibilities that are not shared and guarded very closely. So when growing up, one learns all they can and taught everything about their clan and their responsibilities to the whole. And that's, what you, that's, what, that's about all you learn. And everything else that other clans do, they remind different clans if they jump the responsibility line and start doing other things, they remind them that's, that's their responsibility and it's let back to those people to perform those functions. The worldview from the Hopi is based on the idea that as a system, in the Hopi are matrilineal, you're born into your clan, and it's the, it's the women that have the say-so over land. And in that world, it works very well. So in a worldview, they see a world outside that is in serious pro has serious problems simply because there are no uh, female interactions in that whole system. It's very paternal and has been for thousands of years. And the women lost it somewhere. So the women have to generate or regenerate a new approach to be able to get on an equal pairing with men to be able to fix a lot of the system problems. And that's the basic uh, world view from Hopi is that the system is, has encountered a lot of problems from the paternal subjugation and not in, in, in many cultures. So the, the maintenance of the Hopi system is with, always with an eye toward doing the maintenance of clans and the clan mothers and the females so that that system, so the system that the Hopi have endures.
they've carbon dated older ivy and after two to three thousand years it jumps to ten thousand and then a hundred thousand so it could be anywhere from ten thousand to a hundred thousand years because of the way that carbon dating which is the only reliable way of aside from tree rings but a lot of the older pueblo or the villages that were settled and occupied before no longer exist in those spots but have shifted and moved so the newer areas that are constructed don't represent the original areas that were settled from that area that they understood that they occupied and settled and maintained as a responsibility. Their shrines are, they go all the way to Colorado, to New Mexico, into uh, the Grand Canyon area and even further south. And all those areas where you see all these ruins in the southwest that are referred to as uh, those from different uh, time periods, all these clans as they migrated in different uh, time elements, settled in those different areas and resettled with other ones as they crisscrossed and absorbed each other into a single unit or clan and as they came into the Hopi area they were uh, given permission to remain and join the Hopi. The Hopi is a, the word Hopi is an adjective. Uh, the Hopi referred to themselves as sinum or people and you can have a kahopi or a Hopi which is either a very positive person or a very negative person. So in the vernacular of the Western world, everybody refers to the Hopi Sinum as, as Hopi, but uh, in their own understanding, it's the essence of, the, of an individual as to whether they're a good person or not, as to whether you're Hopi or not Hopi. And uh, so the choice is up to an individual to decide how to con do their conduct in life and with uh, an understanding that uh, the ethos that was implanted, that was given, that was to be respected, was that they treat everyone equal, that that, that there is a um, understanding that all life is important and that no one is more important than anybody else. So in treating everyone equal and maintaining the associations based on just human conduct gives uh, that responsibility more so to people that take that responsibility serious because if you don't need to be responsible for anything then everything changes. Each civilization as they develop culture it's taught and expanded and it influences individuals to uh, decide how to use that uh, for their own satisfaction, benefit. But as conduct changes and things, other, other ways of doing maintenance happen, for lifestyle, for food, for all uh, basic necessities. As, as that changes, then it forces people to move, migrate into other areas or other arenas to, to basically uh, compromise other 
known ethics or ways of doing things that are not not correct. So anything that doesn't support life, anything that's negative in uh, maintaining plant life, earth, maintenance of air, water, land, all things that should be free that are not. Because in the Hopi, everything that was created was not created by Hopi, so it was equally given or shared and that one could use those resources and with your own mind and skill create something which then could be sold. But the resources themselves were in the beginning free, and not to be owned by anyone. Land, because no one made or created land, so you can't put a price on it because you didn't create it. The air is a part of the cosmology of the cosmos that was here before people existed. Water, same, it was here and it was the source and beginning of life. And as part of the beginning, then they were not created by man or their understanding of technology or ideas of how to create things. They were already here, those were givens. So in the past, those did not have price, prices on them. It makes a change in the way people relate to each other, to the land, to create, to to making or forcing systems to create new laws, unnatural laws, to control the expansion of markets of uh, buying, selling. And in the past, barter was a big method of exchange, but barter is no longer the primary way of uh, exchanging goods or ideas. So everything that has a price on it now is, uh, what is, is just the way that uh, the system dictates that laws have to be created to control how people do it. And as people create more laws, there's more laws to be broken, and which makes people fugitives or criminals, because the, the need to survive maintains that they must break laws to be able to accumulate food, water, Everything in the system that was created was created in some order. And the human, the human sector is the most deficient, most uh, unreliable, most needy when born. Everything has to be provided for an earthling from the time that they're born. Food, shelter, milk, diapers, everything has to be given to that individual, that baby, for it to survive. Everything else in the world, in the natural order, is born and doesn't require that type of nurturing. So the human element is the most dependent on all the environments that they for their for their life and so the environment is something that has to be maintained protected and um, just be just, the environment is just something that needs to be more closely associated with how people live. 
And at the moment, it's not. What people do, what they eat, what they use, their waste products, there is no consideration for the environment in how, how things are, are discarded, how they're manufactured. Everything is a pollutant. Everything requires discharge of chemicals back into the, to the environment to be able to have plastic napkins and paper at McDonald's. Well, not just at McDonald's. <laughs>
So we see changes happening and people will survive. It's just, it's just that uh, a lot of the disruptions that are happening induce a lot of disease. They induce a lot of uh, just mental anguish. And for that, it's very disruptive. And also the, the wars in, in how people reproduced. There were large numbers of men in the wars that were eliminated so that there were you know, disproportionate men-women ratios. There were all different uh, aspects of the social interactions of people and, and the earth itself as a social being. In the past, a lot of the usage of the word prophecy is applied to Indian philosophies. In, in many places, had a lot of biblical reference. And in the Bible, anything that was a prophecy was placed and in effect so that there was, there was always uh, the outcome that could not be changed. If it was a prophecy, it was it will it would happen, and that it was coming, and there was no change to it. But in the Hopi, their history is reflective of their understandings of uh, past uh, their past life and in different places from different periods that uh, as they watch these cycles, these earth cycles, natural cycles, and also watch the effect of people and their own interaction and how people also needed to do maintenance to protect that natural cycle if we are able to maintain that approach, then this human element or the life of people on the earth will extend greatly. But in the so in the Hopi, everything is a choice of individuals to be able to for themselves decide an approach that works best for doing things positively and that if everyone does and makes choices to do things more positively then that effect itself will change the way the natural cycle happens but it's up to individuals it's it's teaching the younger ones to eliminate a lot of the the bad understandings between cultures that needs to be eliminated so the, all cultures can work together to, to combine their efforts to be able, and they don't have to join each other's systems and have to change religions. They simply need to understand that changing their methods will have the desired effect. The changes that need to happen and that could happen are very simple and those are just individual actions from individual people working with other people to make changes happen but everything becomes so complicated when everything is controlled in social media in the internet where Everyone communicates, but no one talks. I think in the history of all civilizations and groups of people everywhere, there's always reference to other worlds, as they say, or other time periods when civilizations came and left and disappeared. and during those periods, 
in the Hopi, there was a situation that uh, there was a darkness in which nothing grew and there was no light. And there was a period where it was a result of water. And another period was one of fire. And through each one of these periods, people survived by doing ceremony, by doing rituals and creating avenues for their, their people to use to be able to escape those periods and move on. But people didn't die. And a lot of the downfall, a lot of it had to do with the technological advancement of people during those periods to where they, they arrived at a certain state to the point where it became um, destructive. And as that moved on and they didn't change, then it forced these different collapses of these different periods and people had to start over again, basically. And this world, this time period, is reflective of those same things, where things collapse based on the advancement of technology and we get to the point where things collapse and have to be restarted again. But it doesn't mean people die, it just means that it produces a lot of duress on people, on the earth. And uh, so people are, will always be around. But it's just that people have to work with each other to be able to plan a way to exchange things, to survive, to be able to maintain some semblance of a lifestyle that we have that represents what we have today. So it's it's work. It's just simple work. It's not easy. It won't be. It won't happen overnight. It'll take many generations. We have to teach that to the younger ones. A lot of things that are happening create a lot of greed. The school system doesn't allow people to share problems and problem solving. Everything is made so that one does it themselves. And if you share your answer to someone and they take it, that's cheating. So to arrive at a state to where people can share ideas, share understandings, that hasn't happened yet because it's the system that collapsed to the point where everyone has to be the, the king of the mountain and everything has to progress forward. Nothing can stop, nothing can go sideways. You can't turn around and go back. The linear progression of the system and theories where everything only moves forward is also the basis for, I think, these ideas that people have to always produce more, incomes have to go up, everything has to uh, be more. And more is not less. Everything, everyone is accumulative. So everyone has too many, too much clothing. Everyone has too many this and that, you know, and uh, won't give it up either. So all that is a derivative of this greed that was instilled in all of us at a very young age that some more or less uh, control or don't control. So it's a very cultural thing and the more that uh, we expand in theories of how to do environmental change, a lot of that has to go back to teaching 
fundamentals to children. So everything that's happening is a result of many decades of not uh, doing the required teaching maintenance of these values and ethos that are required for systems to be productive and not degenerate. The remo uh, or in the in the Hopi understanding, the main responsibility be to be able to acknowledge a energy, a creative energy, a creator energy. All all other beings, animals plant life, all those different things that live and require water or nurturing to be able to produce, all those other things that live on the earth don't have the capability to acknowledge a creator. So the main responsibility of man is to, to do their thought fallness about this creator energy that created them and acknowledge it and thank them for it and that's their only responsibility <laughs>